Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, put your hands together. Let's thank God. Praise God. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in Him. And we're grateful for everyone who is here in the sanctuary and everyone who is viewing us um, via Facebook Live. Um, this is the Original Church of God in Indianapolis, Indiana. And we welcome you to our service this morning. Uh, those of you who are in the sanctuary, we're going to ask you to stand if you can, if you will. Amen. Even those of you who are at home, we encourage you uh, to make your home your sanctuary today. Uh, to rid yourself of any distraction and every hindrance that you would focus in. Get your mind on Jesus today. Uh, he's here to bless you. He's here to help you. He's here to strengthen you. Grateful for everyone who is here. Let, let's let's pray. Eternal God, we thank you for this day, Lord. We thank you for the privilege of prayer. We thank you, Lord, for your presence in this place and among us. Now, God, we pray that you'll have your way in this place, that you'll bless, Lord, everyone who is viewing, that, God, you will strengthen us and you will bless us in this worship experience. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness. We thank you for your kindness, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for causing us to rise up this morning. We thank you, Lord, for health and for strength, Lord. We thank you for keeping us and protecting us. We thank you for providing us our every need, Lord, according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Lord, we are grateful because we know it's in you that we live and move and have our being. So, God, bless us. Continue to be with us during this time in your house today. Lord, speak to us out of your word. Cause us to be blessed by this worship experience as we sing your praises, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We've come with a mind to worship you. We've come with a mind to praise you, Lord. You're worthy to be praised from the rising of the sun to the going down of the sand. Lord, your name is worthy to be praised. We bless you, Lord, at all times. Your praise will continually be in our mouth, Lord. We come with a mind and a heart to bless you and to praise you. Nobody's like our God, Lord. So we praise you, Lord, and we give you thanks, Lord. Now, Lord, we pray for our cities, our nation, and the world, Lord. We pray, Lord, that you'll stay the hand of the pandemic, Lord. We even pray, Lord, for our president and others who have been impacted, Lord. Despite over 200,000 in this nation who have died, Lord, we still believe you that Jesus, you're a healer. That there's nothing that is too hard for you to do. So God, have your way, Lord, and bless us, Lord, and then make us a blessing to others, Lord. We pray, Lord, as a result of this, of this worship experience, this worship service today, that many will come to know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. They will confess him, Lord, as their Lord and Savior, Lord. Their lives will be changed. Their lives will be transformed. They'll walk uh, according to the word of God. We thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do. Send deliverance, Lord. Send your healing, Lord. Send your healing, I pray, in Jesus' name. Lord, do what only you can do. For all that you do, Lord, we give you praise. We give your name the glory and the honor. For we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on, put your hands together and bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. This morning we read from 2 Peter chapter number 2. 2 Peter chapter number 2, verses 1 through 9. Reads as follows. But there were false prophets among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you. <laughs> who privately shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. And through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell, and delivered them into chains of darkness, 
to be reserved unto judgment. And spare not the old world, but save Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the, of the ungodly, and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them an example unto those that after should live ungodly. And delivered just Lot, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. For that righteous man dwelling among them, in, in seeing and hearing, vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations, and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. May God add a blessing to the hearing and the reading and the doing of his word. Let's give our attention to the praise team as they lead us in praise and worship. If you're able to stand this morning, we're going to ask that you'll stand, join the praise team and worship. This is our time to sing God's praises to him. Come on, put your hands together as they come.
We were made to give God all the glory and honor that's due unto his name. Amen. Come on, amen. Come on, you and humble everyone. Bless the Lord with us.
preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. Let's pray. Eternal God, we thank you and praise you, Lord, for the privilege of coming into your house to worship you and praise you, to magnify your great name. We know that there's nobody like you, so God, we give you praise that you do today. We thank you, Lord, for this great opportunity we have to sing your praises and to exalt you in your house. So today, Lord, we pray that you'll have your way even as the word of God goes forth. We pray, God, for your help and for your strength. We pray, God, that you will give everyone ears to hear and a heart to receive what you have to say to us this morning out of your word. We thank you, Lord, in advance of every blessing. We give you praise right now for what you're going to do through your word. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on, you can have a seat. Praise God. Verse number five, and spare not the old world, but save no other a person, a preacher of righteousness. Today we want to preach from this subject, the preacher of righteousness. All right, all right. The preacher of righteousness. Oh, yeah. Amen. I don't want you to go nowhere because you think I'm going to come get preachers today. Uh, it's still a word for all of us. All right. October is uh, Clergy Appreciation Month and a uh, time when uh, we as Christians take the opportunity to show special honor to pastors and to ministers. So it's a time of Thanksgiving and appropriate, appropriately so. Uh, Paul writes to, in uh, 2 Timothy, 1 Timothy 5 17 says, let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially those that labor in the word and doctrine. Paul says those who are faithful, those who labor in word and doctrine uh, of ministers of the gospel are worthy to be honored doubly. They are worthy to be given honor upon honor. So for the next, yeah, amen went right there. Amen, but, amen. For, but for the next several weeks, I, I want to focus on the, the preacher, his responsibility, his challenges, his benefit, and his blessing. All right, all right. Okay. Whether you realize it or not, the, the preacher has a special place. He holds a special position. And he is always to stand as an example to us all. Yeah, all right. yeah. He he's also stands as a barometer to measure that the attitude and conduct of the people. Generally, what is true about the preacher is also true about the people. Yeah, yeah. Hosea four nine says. New Living Translation, and what the priests do, the, the people also do. So now I will punish both priests and people for their wicked deeds. The, the prophet Hosea says, what the priests do, the people also do. And so when we see a good among the people, we would expect that there is also generally good among the preachers. Right. And when we see bad among the people, we can generally expect to see some bad among the preachers. Yeah. Yeah. We, we can't separate preacher and people, uh, though the responsibility, there's a great response, a greater responsibility on the preacher. Therefore, the message today is not just to preachers, it's to people as well. So today our focus is on the preacher of righteousness. Yeah, and today there's a great need in our, in our society for righteousness among preachers, for righteous preachers and for righteous preaching. Yeah. Too often today our society glamorizes 
villains and gangsters and thugs and bad boys and bad girls. Uh, good guys are, are no longer role models for a whole lot of people. We, we'd, rather, we'd rather see the, the, the bad boys and the cutthroats and all that. And, 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 and even our media many times glamorizes them so much more than, than it does those that do good and do well. The problem is not confined just to, to young people. I want to say that because right. we got a whole lot of white collar criminals and white and Wall Street gangsters yeah. that are idolized by a whole lot of adults. Right. But, but Paul warns us in his writing uh, to the church of Corinth, 1 Corinthians 15, 33 and 34, Paul warns uh, and says, be not deceived, evil communications corrupt good manners. Then he says, awake to righteousness and sin not. If, if, if you if, uh, the saying, if you lie down with dogs, you, you get up with fleas. Uh, evil communication corrupts good manners. And when, when we walk with evil, we can expect that we will be evil as well. Our world needs to awake and to embrace and to accept righteousness and its blessings. That's why there's a great need for preachers of righteousness. Amen. Amen. And, and today, in the day and the climate in which we live, it's even more important that we would be preachers of righteousness more than preachers of politics, more than, more than preachers even of, of other societal norms, that we would embrace the word of God first and foremost which will give us direction in every area of life. Yeah. Right. When Peter writes uh, 2 Timothy, his purpose in writing this letter was, was to warn believers of, of the danger of following false teachers. They, they had false teachers back then too. Yeah. And, and to remind them of, of God's judgment. So, so it's just not a matter of, of choosing what's right or wrong, but we also have to remember that there is a consequence to, to what we do. If we choose unrighteousness, there's a consequence to it. If we choose uh, unrighteousness or righteousness, there is a consequence to either one, and we can't escape both. So it is that he writes to warn them about the false teachers and the judgment. If you look at the close of chapter number one, uh, Peter said that the prophets of the Old Testament spoke as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. His, he, makes, he makes this connection that there are good prophets and they wrote as the, as the Holy Ghost moved them to write. And now he mentions in addition to the, the good prophets, the godly prophets, the righteous prophets, that there would be false prophets as well. And I believe in his writing, though, though he does not explicitly come out, but, but he does mention several things, I believe, that will help us to distinguish a preacher of righteousness from false teachers or false prophets. And so it is when he opens up in, in verse number one, uh, in the first part of verse number one, he says, but, but there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who shall privately, who privately shall bring in damnable heresy. The, the, the first thing he does and the, the first contrast he makes is that there are going to be false prophets who are going to secretly, privately bring in damnable heresies, false teachings. So the righteous preacher has to proclaim the truth. If, if the false teachers, if the false preachers are going to bring in of false teachings, damnable heresies, 
then the righteous preacher, the first point, the righteous preacher has to proclaim the truth. Everybody say truth. truth. Help wake some of y'all up. Peter warned that believers, warned the believers that there would be false teachers among them, even like uh, the, 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 the parable of the, the teaching of the tares growing among wheat. Yes. He didn't say that there would be false false uh, teachers that, that would be outside. He says they would be among them. Uh -huh. And they, false teachers grow up just like tares among the wheat. That the tares look like the wheat until there is time for fruit. And there's going to be false teachers among you and I, even in this day, until there is time for fruit. And the scripture warns us, uh, encourages us that by their fruit you shall know them. And he says that they will privately bring in damnable heresy. They, they disguise themselves as preachers of the gospel. Privately, there means that, that they would do it uh, deceitfully, that they would smuggle. Uh, one, one version said they would smuggle, that they would um, present themselves uh, uh, under deception as the real thing, but wherever there is a real thing, there is most often a, a counterfeit as well. And there are even now counterfeit preachers in the world that go around uh, posing as the real thing. But, but the righteous preacher does not deceive. The righteous preacher proclaims God's truth to the people no matter what. In this day, these these false prophets were deceptive after the after the pattern uh, of Satan and and even the serpent in the wilderness. When in the serpent uh, in, in Genesis, when it mentions the serpent, the first thing it says that the serpent was more subtle; he was more cunning than uh, than any other beast in the field. From the very beginning. Satan reveals his hand in evil to say that it's going to come about subtly, it's going to come about by deception, it's going to come about in cunning ways. And that's why we have to be careful. That's why we got to know the real thing so that if you know the real thing, then you can spot the false thing. Haven't, haven't you heard about uh, the, the training that, that goes on in banks where uh, bank tellers have to handle money so they will know the real thing from the false thing? Because, uh, because people will try to slip in uh, counterfeit bills among real bills and the banker has to know what's real and what's false. As a people of God, you and I need to know what's true and what's false. We, got, we, we have to handle the word. We got to be so well acquainted with the word of God that we know what's true and what is false. Malachi describes the ideal priest in his day as a righteous priest. He says for that, that righteous priest that the law of truth was in his mouth and iniquity was not found in his lips. He says he walked, he walked with me in peace and equity and it turned many away from iniquity. He says he spoke the right thing and then he helped lead many away from sin and iniquity. The, the, the righteous preacher that proclaims truth will have a great impact to lead people away from sin instead of into sin. The preacher of righteousness must proclaim the truth because uh, uh, among the people of God, everything about the believer reflects truth. So it has to be uh, among the preacher. Scripture tells us that God is truth and there's nothing false, there's nothing evil in him. The scripture says that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. That the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, is the spirit of truth. The scripture tells us you'll know the truth and the truth will make you free. The scripture tells us that truth endures forever. The scripture tells us that truth preserves, that truth will be our shield and buckler, that truth reaches the clouds, and that truth guides. You want to know when, when a preacher preaches? 
his righteousness. He's going to declare the truth. It's going to make a difference in our life and in the life of the preacher who proclaims it. He's going to proclaim the truth. He's going to be consistent day after day, time after time to declare the truth. You don't have to worry about him. You'll always find him in the word. You'll always find his message rooted and grounded in the word rather than in his own opinion. The preacher of righteousness proclaims the truth. If there's anything this world needs right now, it's some truth. We're, we're, all, we're all in the tizzy now because we don't know what's true. We, we, let, let me sidebar here. Let me, we, we don't even know where the president is, what the deal is with him, because the doctors won't even come out and say what's true. We'll come back. The righteous preacher uh, declares the truth. Secondly, look at the, the second part of verse number one. Even denying the Lord that bought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction. So, so talking about the, the false teachers, he says, now, now the, 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 the Old Testament uh, the, those old prophets wrote as they were moved by the Holy Ghost, but, but there's going to be, as there was false prophets among them, there's going to be false teachers among you. Yeah. And say, the first thing there, and then now the second thing those false teachers did, he said, they're going to deny the Lord that bought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction. Right. The second way we, we distinguish a preacher of righteousness is that he declares Jesus. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, second point, uh, the, 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 pre, the righteous preacher declares Jesus. Amen. Peter warned the believers that, that there would be false teachers who deny the Lord that bought them. Mm. And then that sounds kind of convoluted because if he, if he bought them, then, then, then why would they be false? But, 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 but the truth is that Jesus paid the price for everybody, yeah. even for those that don't receive him. Amen. So, so re in reality, he's bought us all, yeah. whether we're redeemed or not, whether we receive him or not, he's paid the price for everyone. Yeah. The danger is that those who deny Jesus will be destroyed. He says they bring upon themselves swift destruction. So, so Jesus said, but, but whosoever will deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father which is in heaven. And I don't believe any of us want Jesus to deny us, but it seems real easy for men to deny Jesus. The preacher of righteousness declares uh, Jesus' power. 1 Corinthians 1 23 and 24 says, but we preach Christ crucified unto them which are called Christ the power of God and Christ the wisdom of God. Every preacher of righteousness will, will always be grounded to declare Jesus as Lord, as Master, and as Savior. That will exclude any other, any other person, any other being, any other idol that would pretend or claim to be a savior or a God. So when we, when we declare Jesus, that means we exclude all the others. And that's what makes Christianity so distasteful to so many people because everybody now wants us to be inclusive. And ecumenical, and, and when they, and many times when 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 they desire for 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 preachers to pray in public, they don't want you to mention Jesus. You can say God, you can say a higher power, but 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 many people know the moment you declare Jesus' name, you have excluded all the others. And thank God. Thank God for religion. Thank God for belief. Thank God for a faith that will declare Jesus' name and exclude all others. Yeah, yeah. 
the, 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 the preacher of righteousness declares Jesus because nothing and nobody really compares with him. Yeah. Acts 4 and 12 says, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. You're not going to call on Buddha, Confucius, Hare Krishna, anybody else and be saved. Only by the name of Jesus are we saved. By faith in his name. So the preacher of righteousness has to declare Jesus. I don't care what anybody else declares. I don't care what anybody else says. For me and my house, we've got to serve Jesus. It is the preacher of righteousness that exalts Jesus, even not his own self. That's a danger in the world that we live in now, because now every preacher can have his name plastered on on on, on social media. You can get uh, you can get your own page. You can get a, your own following. You don't have to even have a church. You don't have to have nothing that's for real. All you have to do is get an opportunity. And now, uh, thank God for the good of social media but but it also gives anybody a platform to say anything they want whether it's true or not and so now we've got a multitude of crackpots out there that are that will exalt themselves even among Jesus so it is a preacher of righteousness that exalts Jesus so, uh, even among his own. He, he says in 2 Corinthians 4 5, we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus, the Lord, and ourselves, your servants, for his sake. Yeah. And whenever we, whenever we see a preacher who will exalt himself among Jesus, you know you've got a false prophet. You know you've got a false preacher. In these days and times, uh, people need to know. Uh, the difference between a preacher of righteousness and a false preacher. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, they, uh, they, they come with persuasive words. They, they come with, 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 uh, with all the bells and whistles on to, to allure men and to seduce men to themselves. But you and I have to, have to know enough about the word of God and have to walk closely enough with God and have the, the power of the Holy Spirit leading and guiding us so that we'll know what's real and what's not real. Yeah. So it is the righteous preacher that pro proclaims truth. It is the righteous preacher that declares Jesus. And then now the, the third, look at verse number two and three. It says, and many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. False, false, false preachers will speak, speak evil of the truth. And through covetousness shall they with feigned words, counterfeit words, pretense, pretending words, lies, with feigned words, they'll make merchandise of you whose judgment now of a long time later not. There is a judgment for false preachers, and their damnation slumbereth not. False, false preachers need to know uh, that, that there is a time of judgment, and, and their, their judgment is not going to slumber. It's going to come. So the third point is that the righteous preacher knows the way. Amen. The righteous preacher knows the way. Peter warns that uh, the, the believers that many would follow pernicious ways, deadly ways, fatal ways of false teachers who speak against the truth. You ever wonder why people follow folks to their detriment? You ever wonder why hundreds of people would, would go off to Guyana with Jim Jones and drink Kool-Aid? False prophets aren't necessarily stupid prophets. But he says that, 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 that they have, they, they got deadly, they got fatal ways. 
speak speak against the way of truth. Don't don't be so don't be fooled by large numbers and crowds. And I'm not speaking against large numbers and crowds, but I'm saying uh, because somebody's got a, a large following, don't don't come to the conclusion that he is a preacher of righteousness. False teachers choose the way of destruction for themselves and also for those who follow them. And that's why today you need to know uh, uh, that, that, that there are preachers of righteousness uh, because you're not going to be able, uh, when, when a day of accountability comes, you're not going to be able to tell God, well, you know, they, 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 they led me off the cliff. And they made me drink the coop. No, you need to, you've got to know for yourself. The, the, false, the false teachers represent those who enter in at the wide gate and the broad way that leads to destruction. And the scripture says many will go in that way. While the preacher of righteousness represents those who enter at the straight gate and the narrow way that leads to life, but few find it. And, and we've got to know uh, that, that it is not always the, the crowd that determines uh, the, the veracity, the truth of, of somebody's message. That there are many people that get a crowd and a following that are no more than just false preachers or false prophets. False teachers don't know the way and, and are like those who are blind. They are blind leaders of the blind and if the blind follow the blind they both fall in the ditch yeah, yeah. Amen. that's why we need to make sure that we know the, the truth the righteous know the way yeah. the way to life he says that there is a certain destruction for those who are false teachers and, and lead others in that way as well. The righteous know the way. Proverbs 11 and 19 says, as righteousness tends to life, so he pursues e so he that pursues evil pursues it to his own death. If we follow after false teachers, false preachers, if we follow after that that is evil, then we set our own demise, we set our own death, we set our own destruction by following those that are going to their destruction as well. We've got to choose in this way. Are we going to go the way of life or are we going to go the way of death? I'd rather follow Jesus and the way of life. I'd rather follow a preacher of righteousness and the way of life rather than follow a false prophet and the way of death. Yeah, and so it is in these few scriptures that we read already that the righteous preacher proclaims the truth, the righteous preacher declares Jesus, and the righteous preacher knows the way. Then, then verses 4 through 8, let me read this real quickly for you. For if God spared not the angels, so, so now he's going to give examples. He said, now, this false, false teachers, false preachers, and, and this is what they do. Now, for an example, he said, now, if, if God didn't spare the angels that sinned, but cast them into hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment, he said, in essence, what he's setting up to say is, nobody's getting out of this. God, God punished the angels that were in heaven that rebelled. Yeah. Secondly, he says, God spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in, in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. God destroyed the world by the flood. Uh -huh. Only Noah and his family were saved. Mm -hmm. Third example, God turned the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them an example unto those that after should live ungodly. Mm -hmm. Amen. And delivered just Lot. Most of the time we don't we don't put just and Lot together. <laughs> he said, but he delivered just Lot, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. 
for that righteousness, talking about Lot, dwelling among them and seeing and hearing, vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. And we can argue about Lot all we want. But Lot did get away. He did, he did, he did heed Abraham's message to him and got away. But but I want to focus here on Noah. He says he's a preacher of righteousness. The scripture tells us that the world during Noah's Noah's day was wicked. But Noah was a righteous man and Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. The scripture tells us that Noah was a just and, and perfect in all of his generation and that Noah walked with the Lord. It's not until this New Testament writing that Noah is, is called a preacher. What he's called in the Old Testament is a just, a righteous, and a godly man. So, so first I want to say uh, that the preacher of righteousness must be righteous, must be a righteous man or righteous woman. Yeah. Uh, you, you can say the right thing and still not be the right thing. And, and, and so not until we get to the New Testament is Noah called a preacher of righteousness. Amen. God in, in Noah's day decides I'm going to destroy the world because of wickedness and tells Noah to build an ark because it's going to rain. And then had to explain what rain was because it had never rained. The dew just came up and watered everything. But now God said, in my anger, in, in, in my disgust with man, I'm going to send the rain not from the earth. I'm going to send it from the sky. And I'm going to destroy the world by rain. Tells Noah to build an ark. So here is Noah building an ark to, to, to God's specification. And, and, and it's not like he went on a, on a building tear and it took him a, a month to build it. 120 years. That's enough time for us to say must not be God's will a whole lot of times. You know, how many times can you figure in your mind, I don't really think it's going to rain. 120 years you build this ark. You got to explain to everybody that asks you it's going to rain. Now if he could shut his garage door and build the ark in his garage and nobody see him. Easy peasy. No. Eh? No. You can't hide the ark. You, you got to build the ark out there for, for everybody to see. And you got to tell them that this is God's idea for salvation. While we're going there, you and I ha have to make sure that our ark is built in public among everybody. And, and, and make sure we tell and explain to everybody that this is God's idea for salvation. When we read and carry our Bible, when we say that there are some things that we just don't do, when we say that there are some places we just don't go. When, when, when we say that this is God's idea that we would pray. When we say that this is God's idea that we would be humble. When we would say this is God's idea that we would love. That, that, that that's the way we build our ark in public so that others can see that this is the way of salvation. I know it's a whole lot easier than getting some nails and some wood and, and building an ark visibly and physically, but somebody's got to see in the way that we live like Noah as just and righteous people to provide the way of salvation to everybody that would enter in. And Noah obeys God. The time was certainly a test of Noah's obedience to God and faith in God and love for God. And God, God brings righteous Noah and his family into the ark in time. 
and God shuts the door. Yeah. So you can't blame Noah for keeping people out because God shut the door. Yeah. And when God shut the door, the door was shut and, and nobody could come crying to God, you know, with, with big old crocodile tears and make God, make God open the door back up. The rain, scripture says, the rain fell for 40 days and for 40 nights and the earth was flooded and the same water that destroyed the unrighteous kept the righteous afloat in the ark. God's got a way of saving his people even when it looks like this rain that is destroying everybody else, surely it will destroy us as well. But no, the same rain, the same flood that destroyed everybody else kept the ark afloat. I come to tell you today that, that a preacher of righteousness will lead those that are righteous and they will be saved. In Genesis, we see this Noah, a righteous man, is, is spared from the flood. But in 2 Peter chapter number 2, we get a new perspective of Noah. He's not just a righteous man. He's also a preacher of righteousness. I don't know what his text was. I don't know what all he said. But at some point, he had to explain to people that this is God's way to save us. That this is God's way that he's going to preserve a, a, a new society when the flood is over. Noah's not only righteous in conduct. He's also this preacher of righteousness. And during this 120 years it took to build the ark, Noah was faithfully preaching against the unbelief and the wickedness of his generation. Every time he put a, a piece of board together, every time he followed God's instruction, he was being a witness against the evil and the wickedness of the world that was around him. He was saying that I am fixing God's way of salvation to this whole generation. And the righteous were saved and the unrighteous were destroyed. How tragic that the people refused to hear and heed Noah's warning that it would rain. And Noah, the righteous man, is also a preacher of righteousness because righteousness brings great benefit. Isn't it amazing? And during Noah's time, isn't it amazing that God used Noah, a preacher of righteousness, to preserve all mankind? A, a, a lot was riding on Noah to begin a new society after the flood. So, so, so God chose a preacher. Now, to make God said, I'm going to start this new society, I'm going to start a new world, and I'm going to choose a preacher. That caused somebody just to jump in the water and drown themselves. <laughs> But God didn't choose a politician. Amen. God didn't choose a president. Amen. God didn't cho choose a king. He chose a preacher. Yes. He didn't choose an athlete. Right. He didn't choose an architect. Uh -huh. He didn't choose an entertainer. He chose a preacher. He didn't even choose a contractor, a builder, an engineer. He didn't choose a homemaker. He didn't choose a domestic engineer. He didn't choose a rocket scientist. God chose a preacher. He didn't choose a journalist. He didn't choose a teacher. He didn't choose a counselor. God chose a preacher. He didn't choose a community activist. He didn't choose an economist. God chose a preacher, a preacher, but not just any preacher. He chose a preacher of righteousness. A new world would, would need a lot of things, but it could not make it without a preacher of righteousness. And, and all of those things, all of those other people are going to be needed along the way. But God said, I'm going to make it all over again and start all over again. And the first order of business is to have a preacher of righteousness because righteousness exalts a nation but sin is a reproach sin brings every nation down I come to tell even this nation and this world today that we need preachers of righteousness even more than we need somebody righteous in the White House we need preachers of righteousness that will help turn this nation and this world all the way around and face God so God can save us all 
the, the purpose of, of preaching of righteousness is, is a matter of life and death. In, in, in this text that we read, he, he says that, that those unrighteous, that those unrighteous prophets, that, that those false prophets would, would bring, would go uh, and bring swift destruction upon themselves. That their destruction would not linger or would not slumber. That their demise, that their destruction, that their death was sure and certain. And as sure and certain as their death was, so was the life of the preacher of righteousness. So what is true about the preacher, we said in the beginning, is also true about the people. Hosea said, what the priests do, the people do also. So if the preacher will preach righteousness, and if the preacher will live righteous, then people behind him that follow him will be righteous as well. Jesus amplifies this truth of, of, of life and death of those that, that, that hear the word in Matthew chapter number 7, verses 24 through, through 27. Jesus gives them this parable and says that there were two men that decided to build their homes. And, and one built his house on the rock and one built his house on the sand. And just like in Noah's day, there came rain, and there came a storm, and the rains fell, and, and the waves came. And, and, and after, after men had, had built their home, because one man built his house on the surface, on the sand, and, and, the, and the rains came, and the waves hit the house, and his house fell, and great was the fall of it. But the man who built his house on the rock had to dig down first until he hit the rock. He just didn't build his house on top of the ground. He built his house on the rock. And because he dug down deep and hit a rock and then built his house, when the rains fell and when the winds blew and when the waves came, his house stood because it was founded upon a rock. The preacher of righteousness will declare Jesus to the people. And people, uh, and, the, and the righteous preacher and the righteous people will build their houses, will build their life on the rock. That rock is a symbol of Christ Jesus. And, and so it is that when we build on Christ Jesus, it doesn't matter the rains that fall. And it doesn't matter what winds come. And it doesn't matter what waves hit the house. After it's all over, the house will stand. Our lives will stand. We'll still be alive because we built our house on Jesus. The, the song said, on Christ, the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. It is a life builded on Christ Jesus that is a life of righteousness that leads to life everlasting. But if we decide to build on anything else, we can be assured of certain death and certain destruction. So the preacher of righteousness has to declare the truth today and preach until the ungodly are converted. The preacher of righteousness has to preach until the unrighteous are changed and the evil are turned around and the wayward are transformed. The preacher of righteousness has to preach until the lost are found and the guilty are redeemed and the stubborn are moved and the sinful are convicted. The preacher of righteousness has to preach until the dead are born again. The dead are born uh, from above and the dead are born of the spirit. The, the preacher of righteousness has to preach un until darkness is made light and the corrupt are cleansed. But the preacher of righteousness just doesn't preach to those who are outside of the ark of safety. The preacher of righteousness has to preach to the people of God so that the righteous are strengthened and the godly are matured and the just are overcomers and the moral are triumphant. The preacher of righteousness has to preach until the good are empowered and the upright are conquerors and the spiritual are fortified and the pure are made prosperous and the faithful are revived and the saints are perfected. The preacher of righteousness 
has to be faithful to the word of God, has to be faithful to the people of God, has to be faithful to his God until righteousness rains down from heaven and God brought, raises up a, a nation that shall obey. And these are times when you and I need to follow preachers of righteousness that do the will of God and follow them and follow the word of God until life springs forth eternally. It is that, it is that kind of preaching and living that will make a difference in our lives. Verse number nine says, uh, the, the Lord knows how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust to the day of judgment to be punishment, to be punished. Early, early 1900s, some people had an idea about building a, building a boat. This is going to be a pleasure cruise. Well. They built it and said, this, this, this vessel is going to be indestructible. Oh, yeah. and they, they built it to be in the, and here's, they built it for their self. They believed it to be indestructible because they designed it and, and they built it. But, but the voice of false prophets is always fueled by man's faith in himself. And whenever we get an idea, our idea, all our idea, without direction and sanction from God, we can be assured that it's going to fail. I don't care how good it is. I don't care how long it lasts. At some point, it's going down. Yeah, that's right. And they built this boat, called it the Titanic. I know you probably saw the movie, but I ain't seen the whole movie yet. I saw bits and pieces. But they were so sure that the Titanic would not go down. That they didn't that they didn't carry the proper number of lifeboats. They had a lifeboat drill that was scheduled. I think all cruises have these drills. They had the drill scheduled, but they canceled it. Because they said, we ain't gonna need no lifeboat drill. Because the Titanic is indestructible. In the course of, of their voyage, they got seven warnings from other ships about ice, and they ignored all of them. They scoffed at, at hitting the iceberg. They were so they were so confident that the Titanic could not go down, even when they hit the iceberg. It's reported that some took pieces of the iceberg and put it in their glass with their drink. And they kept on partying while they were wearing their life vests because they were, they were so sure of the boat that they were sailing on. And when they came to rescue only one lifeboat was full of people. The others were so certain, so sure that this boat wouldn't go down, that they wouldn't even get out in the lifeboats. The greatest tragedy of the Titanic was that the warnings that, 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 were, uh, that were given were disregarded and resulted in over 1,500 people losing their life. Every day, people are hearing warnings. Every day, people are hearing truth 
from preachers of righteousness. And they're saying, my boat's good. I'm not going down. I've come to challenge both preacher and people today that these are days for preachers and people of righteousness. You can add our day and time to these three examples of Noah, of the angels, and of Sodom and Gomorrah. And you can, and I don't mean add to the word of God, but I'm saying that we fit in here too. That, that the unrighteous even in 2020 will not be spared because of your ingenuity, because you're smart, because you're influential, because you've got it going on, because a whole lot of folks follow you. Righteousness is still God's standard. And not your own righteousness, but righteousness that, that's been provided by God through faith in Jesus Christ. That's the ship that's going to make it through every storm. And while we sit in this storm of 2020, I'm so glad to be on, on board the ship that won't go down. The old ship of Zion is going to make it safer. Yes. It's landed many a thousand. It's going to land many millions, even more. Today, I, I, I urge you uh, not just to, to hear a preacher. I urge you to receive the word of God from a righteous preacher. Yes, amen. Amen. I, I urge you to say yes to God's way of salvation. You and I can't make up our own way to be saved. We've come too late. God has established a way of salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. And ultimately, that's the way of salvation. Being a good moral person is not enough. That's right. That's right. Being a good moral person is good. Yes. But being a good moral person in conjunction with faith in Jesus Christ yes. meets the God's standard for righteousness. Yes. Uh -huh. So today we invite you in the sanctuary as well as you that are viewing that you would come to Jesus. Won't you stand to your feet? If you've not received Jesus as the Lord and Savior in your life, we invite you to do so today. That God is not willing that any should perish. God's not, God's not a mean God trying to send everybody to hell. God's not willing that any should perish, but he wants every man to come to repentance. Repentance for his sin and faith in Jesus Christ. So we invite you to come today. Wherever you are, you need to be saved today. Won't you come? Won't you? Wherever you are, won't you signify by raising your hand if you're in the congregation today or if you're at home? Won't you make that decision and, and raise your hand in faith as a symbol of your yes to God and say, yes, I want to be saved. Yes, I want to be delivered. Yes, I want to assure, uh, I want to assure myself that, that I'll go to, to heaven and live eternally with God in peace. Let's pray. Eternal God, we thank you for the privilege of coming into your house to worship you and to praise you. We thank you, Lord, for
for your word. Thank you, Lord, for speaking to us today. We trust you, Lord, to save everyone who's made a decision for you today. Has repented of their sins today. Made a decision to turn from their old ways. To follow after the word of God. To trust the leading and the strengthening of the Holy Spirit in their life. To make them a new creature. Now Lord save and deliver. Make whole and make new I pray in Jesus name today. We thank the Lord for everyone's decision today. That would walk after you and trust you. We thank you for we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on, thank God for giving praise today. Praise God, praise God. While you're still standing, this is our first Sunday, and this is the day and the, and the time that we come to uh, receive the Lord's Supper communion. Here in the sanctuary, we made ready. We've got our cup and we've got our bread. Uh, we're ready uh, to receive. This is a day and a time, first of all, to remember Jesus' sacrifice for all of us on Calvary. That Jesus died for us all, shed his blood for us all, gave his body for us all. And today we take this time to remember he said blood is also and also to remember uh, members of the body of Christ that are with us even here today. So we commune with him and with our brothers and sisters in Christ today. Scripture says in 1 Corinthians chapter number 11, starting with verse number 23, for I received of the Lord that which also I also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus the same night in which he was betrayed to bring it. And when he had given thanks, he break it and said, Take ye, this is my body which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, Lord, and many sleep. Thank God for his word today. As we make ready, let us pray. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for the privilege of yes, yes. coming to your table yes, Lord. to remember Christ's sacrifice that is a payment for our sin. Thank you, Lord the sins of the whole world for all time. We thank you that that blood still flows even now and today. That men are saved by faith in that sacrifice. That men are delivered and healed and redeemed by that sacrifice. We thank you, Lord, for his willingness to go to the cross in our place and for our sins. We thank you for salvation today. We thank you, O oh God, that we can be assured of eternal life and peace with God forever because of Jesus' sacrifice. We thank you for the plan of salvation and thank you, Lord, for, for even uh, the, the, the time, this, this time and, and the ability to, to, to to receive that, that righteous standard of God. We praise you today. We give you thanks today. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Scripture says, 
When you're giving thanks, you break it and say, take heed, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do and remember to me. Shall, shall we partake of the bread together? And it reads after the same manner also he took the cup. We didn't stop saying this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Say we we'll take up the cup together. Come on, but somebody thank God for the blood. Thank God for Calvary. Thank God for a Savior's sacrifice. Thank God. Thank God for salvation. Thank God. Come on, praise God for his goodness. give out those who have joined us online. Let's give them a thank you today. Praise God for them. I want to remind everyone who is here in the sanctuary as we prepare to, to exit out, we're going to give. As we exit out, we're going uh, to give our tithes and offering, and we encourage every viewer uh, to join us in giving as well. Giving is a, is a part of our worship to God. And so if you will access our uh, web church website, www.ocogindy.org, www.ocogindy.org, uh, you can click on the button to give. Uh, you can uh, give uh, uh, electronically. You can give even by mail, mailing it to the, the church address. We're grateful for everyone who has joined us in giving. If you've been blessed by the, the worship service and the opportunity to join us in worship, we encourage you to give. Thank God for that opportunity to give. Now, as we prepare to exit out, we're going to give the benediction. Won't you stand to your feet? Do want to encourage you. We're still, still meeting uh, online for our prayer service on Wednesday as well as adult Sunday school on Saturday. Join us then and be blessed. Let's pray. Eternal God, we thank you and we praise you for this day and for this time, Lord. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you, Lord, for the privilege of coming into your house. Now, God, have your way as we leave this place today. We thank you, Lord, for being your people and for you being our God. Bless us, Lord, and then make us a blessing. Protect us, keep us, provide for us. Have your way in the life of every believer. Help us, Lord, to reach out to those around us and to be your witnesses in this day and in this time. For all that you do, Lord, we already give you praise. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.